Okay, Kempi, hi. Yeah, sorry I couldn't join you. We get to bed really early because we're old. We get up at 5.30. So here, at the beginning, you need to sanitize everything. So you use this. There's plenty of um, tutorials on how to use it. It's pretty easy. It's just you dilute it. Everything that you intend to touch with your mead and, and all that stuff, just give it a good um, rinse out with this and you'll be good to go. And once you've done all that, get your honey together, get the water you're gonna use together, get your yeast. And first thing I'll do is after I've sanitized, I'll hydrate the yeast. Just as we said, just put in a little bit of water, you know, like a cup of water, but make sure that's sanitized too. So you use this in, this in the cup. So whenever you, so there's no residual germs or anything when you're hydrating yeast. So yeah, hydrate your yeast and let it sit for 15 minutes to half an hour. It's fine, it can go longer, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't go any less than 15 minutes. Um, you're also gonna need your yeast nutrient. That'll go in to your must later. It's called a must, you know, when you get the, the uh, honey and the water and whatever else you're using to ferment. And I got a bunch, <clears throat> I got a bunch of different yeasts that I use. Generally, I'll use the D47. I've got some of these I can pass to you. And, you know, one satchel is enough for that big uh, 11 liter thing that you've got. I'd use maybe two for the 19 liter. And yeah, so this one is uh, a champagne, I think. And there, you can get up to like 18%. Anyway, and I've used this a bunch of times, it tastes pretty good. Yeah, you get, get, get good results. So I'm gonna hydrate this. Sterilize this. Um, put a little bit of water in. Try not to touch it. And just pour it in. That's fine. You'll find it smells very yeasty, strangely enough. I'll put the honey in some warm water just to get a nice and runny consistency so it's easier to work with and it dissolves quicker once you put it into the carboy. Now sometimes you'll end up with suds in it. I usually rinse them out. The manufacturer of Star Suns, which this one, this one's a cheap knockoff of Star Suns, but I, I think they use the same chemicals, but they say that the, the foam is not really a problem. You can just brew with the foam there. I like to rinse it out anyway, just because I don't like it. But uh, up to you. Ooh, yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Hello. Here's the one that I've already started making. I put uh, because these don't have a lid on them, the ones that I'm used to have a lid with hole, little holes pricked in them to let the gas out that stops insects getting in, um, like little fruit flies and stuff that might be attracted to the sweetness. So I put just some glad wrap over it, put a little couple of holes in the glad wrap and, and tighten it around it. And then these silicon um, stoppers, when you first buy them, sometimes they pop out, especially when the pressure's uh, building in here. So I just fashioned a, uh, a bunch of rubber bands together, put them all the way around the bottom and you know, just... So that's the, that's the gas given off by the yeast. We're consuming all the sugars. And you'll start to see them like building up at the bottom down here. And this will go over the course of weeks until it starts to slow down and eventually stop. And that's when you can rack into the secondary fermenter. We'll go through that later. Okay, oh, the honey is in now. Down, down. Now I'm gonna add the water. I always make sure that I leave enough space at the top for the um, yeast and the water that it's hydrating in. Saran wrap on top, or cling wrap, whatever you call it. Because now I'm going to agitate it. 
This is something if you're using your big pot, you can use your stirrer or you can put your stirrer on a drill, whatever. Um, because mine's only five liter, I'm going to just cover it like that. And then I can start agitating it to mix the honey in with the water to get a nice consistency before we take out gravity reading with the hydrometer. Make sure it's not too much liquid in it because there's going to be displacement. Pop in your hydrometer and it should bubble around. Then you give it a spin like that. Centrifugal force will make it settle in the middle. And then you look down where it says 1.00. Follow it down. And this one tells me it is 1.1. Sometimes it's hard to read with the bubbles. Pretty much 1.11. So we have our final gravity. Oh, sorry, our, our original gravity, OG. And now I'm gonna just pour this. So all the yeast is in there. It's gonna get active overnight, for sure. Water into the my valve. And let it sit in there. Put that over here. Last thing I forgot to mention is the nutrient. You can put in, for this amount, like five liters, I'll probably put in a quarter to a half a teaspoon and don't have to be too anal about it. Sprinkle. No activity yet, but wait till the morning, you'll probably see something. <laughs>